Hi everyone, this is Lisa Cronin from It's the Little Things in Card Making, and I'm back with my third video in a series of three videos um, showcasing my findings with the We Are Memory Keepers foil quills, and um, wants to do a little foiling, but I want to start at the beginning and show you how my I set myself up. Okay, so this is a extension cord, and I have the ports plugged into the extension cord, and there's four ports on this. So it's run by electricity, it's not a battery, um, and yeah, so it fits three or four devices at one time. So it's holding all three of my pens. Okay. Now, I didn't tell you this, but I burned myself about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And this is what happened. And it was a very deep burn. It took a long time for it to heal. Um, it did get a little infected and I was a little worried that it was a little too close to this vein here, but, um, yes, you, you can burn yourself. I had them, I had my pen standing up in like a, like a, a jar and I went to reach over for something and literally my, my hand, my my arm literally went right into the top of one of the pens and it blistered immediately. So you have to be really careful. And I'm not a wuss, you know, I can I can take I can take things. I'm a good tough Brooklyn girl, but that hurt and it 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 hurt for a long time. So what I've done now is I don't keep them in a jar anymore because I don't want to hurt myself so I keep them on my desk but I this is a silicone um, type of thing so it, it is kind of heat proof I'm trying to think of what this is for I don't remember what it's for um, it's a kitchen item it, it, could it be pot holders possibly two, two came in a set so I typically will lay it down and lay my pens down and they stay in place you know they they're far enough from each other not to burn each other because I did burn this one with another pen you could see and um, so this is typically how I will keep them this is typically how I would keep them on my desk and that's just to ensure that I don't burn myself again and what I'm going to do now is explain the foiling process. So, <clears throat> I have them in order because I want to get them all tangled. So, I'm just putting them aside for now. And what I did was I stamped an image using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. Three little bunnies. On tissue paper this is the tissue paper and the black cardstock that I put together in my one of my last videos and I did the same thing with the tracing paper now what I did was I did not stamp on my tracing paper and tissue paper while it was on top of my cardstock because I did not want to get ink on my cardstock. So I placed it down this way. And you could see I stamped it. Now it's going to go through. And I want to show you that just in case you have anything underneath it and you try this, it is going to go through. It's a very, very thin paper. And it will even go through on the tracing paper. So you know, if you have something important underneath and you're stamping, know that you're going to get ink on whatever's underneath. So this is a, a little scrap paper that I use. 
and now I can take that away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with these pens a little bit, and I'm trying to decide um, how I should do it. I know that I need my, my foil. It's going to be this foil here, and it should be big enough to cover all three images, which it is. But what I'm going to do is I am going to make myself a little bit of a hinge right here. Because I kind of want this foil to stay in place. I'm making sure that it's not a place that I need to foil on top of. And then I'm going to just put a small piece of tape. I'm going to flatten it, make it nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to put a small piece at the end. And that should keep it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the tissue paper. And I did wait for these. I even heat set them. I waited for this to dry. I heat set them a little bit. And then I waited about 10 minutes. So I'm hoping I can make it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make myself a little, a little hinge here. And then just to keep the paper taunt and um, and to keep it in place I'm just going to tack it on the other end. And I want to make sure all my images are clear of the tape which which it is and always the foil goes pretty side up and now I am going to start foiling. I'm going to use on the tracing paper first. I'm going to use the smallest nib and all I'm going to do is trace the image and I'm putting not a lot of pressure just a little bit and I'm going I'm trying not to go too quickly I'm like medium speed whatever medium speed is but I'm trying to be careful I really do try to avoid picking up my pen. I want to make sure that all my lines are fluid and smooth and unbroken. Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hmm, did I do this ear? Did I do this side of the face? Because when you work with these quill pens, it's not like you're leaving anything behind. You're not using a pencil or a pen. So as you start working, there's nothing there to tell you you've been there before, except what I said in my last video. There's a little bit of a shimmer. And I don't know if you could see it, but it's there. I could see it. It's a little bit of a shimmer. So I know I've been there. And now I'm going to do the eyes. little nose and the whiskers and again this is with the smallest tip and that's what I got not it's a good foil it's a good foil unbroken lines but it looks a little wonky. The round, you know, the round part of the top of the head, it looks a little wonky. Okay. Now I am going to smooth out my surface again, and I'm going to use the second largest nib. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go around. And I'm going to put a little pressure. Not a lot. Do I have to go as slow as I did with the skinny one? With the smallest nib? Um, About the same speed, I guess. And I'm going to say that this image will probably look better. Not because I did a better job but because it's a bigger nib. So this image 
will just look stronger. See a difference? It's a little wider. It's not as thin. The lines aren't as thin. I felt much more comfortable using the pen on this one versus this very small tip on this one. And I'm using a, a, a soft platform to work on. Now we're going to try the thicker one. I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to follow my line. Okay, my paper is bunching up a little bit. So I'm picking up my pen and rather than drag the paper with me, kind of letting it settle down. Into the eye, the nose, the whiskers, and let's see that image. So there's that third image, and you can see the difference in the lines between this and this. Now ideally, what would be great, I like this image. I could see doing the outline of the image in this pen and doing the details, the face, the nose, the whiskers in the the second or the first, the, the, the smallest or the next to the smallest, and switching my pens up that way. But actually, I like this one the best. Now I'm going to show you something, something interesting. And what's interesting is you can get different lines just by the amount of pressure you're putting down. So, I'm going to put a lot of pressure down. I'm going to put medium pressure, pressure down. And I'm going to be putting a little pressure down. So, with one tip, I'm getting three different size lines. Can you see that? I'll do the same thing with the second one. And you see how I'm constantly relaying it down in the same place? That's important. So I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure down, medium pressure down, and light pressure down. And again, three different size lines. I'm going to do the same thing with the third one, with the smallest nib. A lot of pressure down, medium pressure down, light pressure down. So you're going to get different looks depending upon how fast you go, depending upon how much pressure you put on the pen. So these are the variables. This is why I think they can't tell you um, a standard. They can't give you a standard and say this will work with this and do it this way because there's just too many variables. So this is why it's so important to play. 
it can get frustrating and you can be at a point where you're not getting what you want to get after you use these quills don't give up keep playing keep changing your materials change your speed change your pressure um don't don't give up now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the tissue paper and then we're going to look at the difference so i'm going to use now with the tissue paper you do need a lighter hand the thing about the smallest nib on tissue paper it's very scratchy it really is it's like taking a a pin and scratching the paper so i'm not going to use a very hard I'm not going to use a very hard, um, a lot of pressure. I'm not going to press it down very hard. And as I said before, tissue paper has probably one, at the most, two uses before it starts falling apart or before it starts getting out of shape. So I'm going nice and slow. I'm only picking up the pen when I see that I'm dragging the paper with me. So I'll pick up the pen. I'll try to go from the other way. And did I do the nose? Let's see. I don't think I did the nose. I didn't do the nose. I don't think I did the nose. Let's check. No, no nose. Okay. Again, I'm going to put down my, my foil and my paper. I'm going to go back to the nose. And I think I have to go here. And I could see that little bit of a, of a sheen. And let's see what we got. Look what we forgot. Look what we forgot. Why'd you forget that? Okay. So I'm going to bring it back over. Smooth it down. Bring over my little hinge. And then I'm going to put that line in. And I should, I should have lined up perfectly. And I did. Look at that. That's why these hinges are so important. Okay. Now, I'm going to take the second largest. I'm going to make sure that my, my foil is down nice and smooth. There's no bumps and it's not bubbling up anywhere. And I'm going to do the second image. Now I can put a little more pressure on this one because this quill point is not scratchy. It's not so pointy that it's ripping the paper. So we will probably get a better image I'm kind of holding it firmly down, too. I don't really want this tracing paper to move. And let's see how we get on that one keep forgetting the nose. I can tell just by, there's nothing, the impression is not in the foil. Let me bring that up to show you. So I did all the other lines, but I didn't do the nose because I don't see the impression in the foil. So I'm going to turn it back over, make sure it's in place, and I am going to go back and do the nose. There's my bunny. This is where I picked up the pen. 
right here. I went around, I got to this point, and then I was dragging the paper with me. So I picked up my pen, and then I came from this point up, and I wasn't lined up perfectly. Okay. my pens are in place. Now the third largest tip. And again I picked up my pen. You see the silver sheen I'm leaving behind? If you notice but I'm trying to use the edge of the tip for the smaller like the whiskers so I don't have as big of a line did I pick up the nose again nope got it So there you go. And this is on tracing paper. And I don't know if you can see, but the tracing paper is starting to rip already. Not in a lot of places, but let me see if I can put something underneath. Something underneath so you could see it. Um, how about another piece of foil? Okay, I'll use this. All right. So this is the back of the tracing paper. And where you see the, the, reflect, the reflective foil, that's where the tracing paper is already starting to rip. You see that? And there was another pl a place, too, that I felt it starting to rip and I'm looking for it. Mm, can't find it right now. Who knows? No, I think just there. Thought I felt it ripping somewhere else. Right there. So you can see the foil there. So you can see I've already gone through this tracing paper. I'm going to go back here. I want you to see, um, not tracing paper, this tissue paper. And I want you to see the, the shimmer left behind by the pen. You see it? And all the pens do that. You can see it, right? Yeah. And right here. Try to bring it up, right, right here. Yeah, you can see it better this way. So that's what I was talking about. The hardest thing to do is know where you've been and where you have to go back. Because when you, um, when you trace with the pens, it doesn't leave anything behind except that very slight shimmer. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did um, with the other one. And I'm just going to put a lot of pressure, a little bit of pressure, I'm sorry, medium pressure, and barely touching. Now this is going to come out even more than the other one did because the tissue paper is so much thinner. So I want you to look at the difference here. Okay. So here is where I really pressed down. 
and here is where I really press down. This is a better image. This is medium, and you can see big difference here, not as fluid. The tracing paper gives you, even though it looks like it's not a broken line, that last one, it's ragged, it's, it has a ragged edge to it. And this was on the tracing paper. So the heat is not penetrating as much as it's penetrating through the tissue paper. Can you see the difference? I can hold it this way. You can see the difference. Much more fluid, much smoother than this one. I mean, this still gives you a, a good result, but this gives better. I'm going to do the other one also, and you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to press down. Then I'm going to just press down a little bit, like medium, I guess, and then barely touching the paper. And you can see how nice that came out versus this one. It's still a good image, don't get me wrong, but it's not as nice as this. This is smoother, it's more graceful, it has, it's not as, oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's not as stiff, like to me this is stiffer, and it's not giving you, it's not, it, do, it doesn't glide. I don't know how else to explain it. And now I'll do it with the um, the smallest tip on the on the tissue paper. Now I'm afraid when I press down that um, I'm going to rip it. So I'm going to press down, but I'm going to try to feel it out a little bit more. So I press down there hard, that's medium, and this is barely touching the paper, barely. These pens are hot, so even just barely touching that tissue paper, I'm still going to get a transferred image. Let's look at it compared to the tracing paper. Okay, there you go. There's a broken, actually, looks like there's broken lines. There's a broken line here. And there's a little bit of stuttering, I guess, and call it here. And this doesn't even look fluid to me. This kind of looks, I don't know. But these, these are unbroken. As delicate as the tissue paper is, I feel like it's less work somehow. Um, I just looked at how much time I've used on this video, and I am going to say thank you for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Um, please comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I, I have to say goodbye. <laughs> All right. Until next time, please remember it's the little things in card making. Bye now.